Welcome to Season 2 of the Making Bank Podcast, where we continue our exploration of South Florida's entrepreneurial landscape with host Keith Costello, co-founder and CEO of Locality Bank. Sit back, relax, and let South Florida visionaries guide you on an entrepreneurial journey from tribulation to triumph, sharing the very stories that have shaped them. Howard Dvorkin, welcome to Locality Bank's Making Bank podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've been looking forward to coming on. Well, we're excited about having you uh, join us, and we've had you on our hit list here for quite a quite a while. We tried to get you on season one. But, I know. You know I, I was a bad boy. That's I right. had to cancel. So, uh, <laughs> so season two is kicking off, and you're part of that. So, uh, so you've had a really interesting background, really interesting career, and uh, you know. So let's go back to the beginning because there's a lot to unpack here with you. Uh, Tell us about how you got started, where you're from, you know, growing up. Sure. I uh, grew up in New Jersey and, uh, you know, grew up in a pretty tough town. Uh, being, uh, you know, it was either you were Italian or you were Italian in my town. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you were I was, I was not Italian, no. but I did try to act Italian. <laughs> You put an A at the end of Dvorkian, Dvorkian. Dvorka (laughs) or something, I don't know. But at the end of the day, uh, we we grew up and it was a very colorful uh, upbringing, had a great time. And uh, it was challenging to a certain extent. You know, we were going along just an average uh, family. And uh, my father passed away when I was a kid and and it was pretty uh, tragic passing and I kind of went off the rails and did some things that I'm probably not proud of, but probably put me in a position to be where I am today. So it, it's pretty interesting. The, the trails that I've taken, there's easier routes to, uh, to that, but I had a very strong mother and an incredibly intelligent mother and, uh, she beat me up when I needed to be beaten. (laughs) So it's okay on that. Um, but uh, frankly, you know, the best thing I ever did was go to college, get an education, uh, came out of college, uh, not knowing really what I wanted to do. So I became a CPA, uh, had an undergrad from American University and then uh, in accounting and went to Miami for graduate school. And I don't even know how I got here. I came down in 1986 for spring break and never left, (laughs) essentially. It's a familiar story. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, you know, worked for, went back to Washington, worked for a large uh, accounting firm, which- uh, So it was your first job you got out of uh, after you graduated from Miami? I went to work for a firm called uh, Lamenthal and Horvath, which then merged into Arthur Anderson. I was in the national tax department uh, and we worked, you know, with some of the brightest brains in the uh, accounting world at the time. And you know, learned everything and, and then came down here. I was transferred down here and uh, back to Bat Laventhal right actually Florida. blew up. No, actually to West Palm. Okay. And uh, for what I did, I did debt restructuring. I was very good at that. Um, and I turned around and uh, got there two weeks later, uh, Laventhal and Horvath went out of business, declared bankruptcy. Anderson came in, Arthur Anderson, which was the premier accounting firm in the world at the time, and uh, fired everybody but myself and another guy. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. And (laughs) welcome to Florida. And, uh, you know, I wasn't happy. So I was there a couple of years and decided to start my own business. And like anything, I started at my kitchen table, uh, where every great businesses are grown. Um, you know, but and I came up with an idea of helping people get out of debt. Uh, While well, you were doing debt restructuring, but it was probably mostly for big corporate. But clients, I, right? it was very big for the during the RTC days, the Resolution Trust days. Right. A lot of people signed a lot of loans and all these banks were going out of business and they wanted the federal government wanted their money back. And that was, you know, my job to try to limit the exposure of our clients. And that's what I did. And I was pretty good at it. Um, 
So I took those tools and applied them to everyday Americans. You know, I didn't touch a person with a net worth of under $10 million at that time. And back in the, in the late 1980s, $10 million was a lot of money. It's a lot of money now, but can you imagine 40 years ago or 30 years ago, yeah. it was a significant amount of money. So you were just working, you were working with individuals, but only uh, wealthy individuals right. in the beginning. Exactly, okay. and major real estate companies and, okay. and things, but mostly doing uh, tax work, high-end tax work. Uh, I remember uh, I was there, uh, I had a mentor, uh, the guy who hired me, and he was probably the number one uh, M&A guy in the country at the time, uh, Al Ellentuck. And, all of a sudden, I'm there two months, and I'm on the phone with Carl Icahn. And, <laughs> and, and, and Carl has very colorful language, <laughs> from what I remember. And uh, we were discussing the T his TWA yeah. uh, leveraged buyout and trying to figure out the tax implications. He's still that. trying to figure some stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man, though. Yeah. Can't take that away from him. No, He's a absolutely. rough, tough guy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's funny. When you go back, and you look at you know, my whole career, it really rolls back to my childhood. Um, going back and I was kind of bred for business. You know, We didn't have a normal family at the time. We had a family when we talked, when we, we had dinner every night at six o'clock, my dad would come in from his business and we wouldn't talk about sports, we wouldn't talk about you know, what you did during the day, we would talk about business. And, you know, all of us are the same mentality. But, you know, my two sisters and I had the same mentality. And we still, to this day, we think alike. And, and, you know, when we were very, we were in, it was always incentivized to be very entrepreneurial. Uh, my sister and I used to do stuff to raise money for charities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we were kids, I mean, I was probably eight years old. My first business, and it was a real business, uh, was when I was like 14, 15 years old. I was shoveling driveways mm -hmm. for snow, and I had accounts. And, you know, I had 10 guys working for me, <laughs> shoveling. We would out, we'd be five in the morning till five at night. And then the next year, I bought all, used all the profits and I bought all this equipment. So all through high school, I'd be making thousand bucks a snowstorm. And it was great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's one of the good things about living up north. <laughs> no, that is, that's probably the only thing. <laughs> but it was it was fun. It was interesting. But then, you know, I knew forever that I wasn't going to be able to work for people. I'm probably the world's worst employee. If I had an employee like me, I'd fire him the first day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. It was good. But you know, there's nothing better than starting a business from the ground up and, 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 you know, going through and working till two in the morning and waking up at five or six and going back into the office. Nothing better than That's that. That's awesome. So when you started, your business at the kitchen table. Were you still working at Arthur Anderson and you were you planned it while you uh I actually left Arthur Anderson oh, you did. and and you cut it right off. I cut it right off. I worked was doing some accounting. So you must have had some savings and uh, a little no. less than you think. And and wow. I But well, you were just that fed up with the I hated whole. accounting. Okay. I just did not enjoy it. Huh. And you know, at Laventhal, there was a very clear and quick uh, roadmap to making a part, to becoming a partner. Okay. At Anderson, it was could have been fifteen years, and I'm like, I'm not doing this for fifteen years. <laughs> That's crazy. Right. So I essentially I got married, bought a house, and quit my job all within three wow. months. So Gwen went, and, she was like, I'm marrying only, this unemployed guy. And the only thing that lasted was, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's why the marriage failed. 
<laughs> but the only thing that lasted was the company. So okay. Oh, so that wasn't Gwen. That was the first. No, one. not Gwen. Yes. No, no, no. Okay, that was good. that was that was the keeper. Working number one. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to be the second wife and the first son. I was always told. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a second wife and I have a first son, and Perfect. we're all good. Great. But um, so, what was that first business? Was that Debt.com? Was that no? It okay. was a company that was called Advisory Credit Services that later turned into Consolidated Credit okay. Counseling, which became, over time, the largest credit counseling agency in the world. Wow. Um, so we have helped over 10 million people get out of debt. Uh, we've been on, you know, we are, people know that brand, and especially, you know, we at uh, 10 years ago, we were probably on TV 700 times a day. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. We and how, how did you go about building that brand? I mean, because that's uh, incredible. A lot of it was I surrounded myself with incredibly smart people, uh, talented people, good bankers. Although I got a funny story. Yeah. So when I started stories. this, no, this is a great <laughs> banker story. Okay. So I was... Uh, a client of Jefferson Bank, if you remember those yeah, guys. Yeah, in Miami. In Miami. North and Miami. And I went to, I, my friend Jim was the banker. And uh, I went to Jim and he's like, I showed him the business plan. And I had the business plan, Keith. It was probably 200 pages. I mean, I sat there for six months and wrote everything out and really did a great this job. This consolidated credit. This was advisory, advisory credit okay, services. Before. And Jim said, you're a successful CPA. You're really good. What are you doing? You can't make money helping people. I go, yeah, but I enjoy helping people. I'll figure out the money thing. And I got a loan from him. Wow. And he didn't want to give it to me. He's like, I don't want to give you a loan because I want you to continue as a CPA. Well, the fast forward five or six years later, Jim comes to work for me. <laughs> wow. What, and what was his last name? Uh, Tisdale. Jim Tisdale. Uh, Jim came to work for That's us. Incredible. And then he, he's now doing some other stuff. He's still there? He's not there. Oh, he's not. He's okay. not. But uh, he but, tried to talk me out of it. And, and it's kind funny. of fun to hear that story. But I did take a loan out, which, you know, I was under the misconception that you needed to, you should take a loan out. But I had no money. But they gave me a loan for $7,000, and I was so distressed uh, <laughs> by owing people money that, that I ended up paying it back like within three or four months. Wow. It just yeah. needed to get it going, and we were cash flow positive. Within three months, I think I was making, I think I made like 10000 a month cash wow. flow positive, and, and, and then it's perpetuated, so I was able to... Send that, say, uh, pay that loan off. So thank you, Jim, for uh, the loan. I appreciate it. So that was a cute little community bank, Jefferson. A little yep. community bank. And, you know, and so that's interesting because now, you know, with everything that's going on in banking and everything, and they talk about, you know, people just going to like these big banks like Chase because they're too big to fail. Um, what What's your thought about that? I personally think banking has changed dramatically relationships count in these big banks you don't get a relationship they don't care who you are or what you did for them last week they have quotas i believe in community banking because you could call keith the president ceo of the bank and get the answer i mean there's a lot of pluses to community banks the bigger banks there's there's a place for them right no question but for entrepreneurs locality is the place to be wow. no question perfect can we like you know <laughs> send, we send that out right now <laughs> blast that to our network that was wow. intentional by the uh, way well, well, thank you howard Thanks. no but i mean it's true yeah i mean look at all you know we have tremendous assets under our control doing the credit counseling right. and debt.com we move a lot of money we need those bigger banking mm -hmm. relationships in order for to get the technology we need but when we want service when we want 
advice when we want to have a friend that's a banker, this is where you need to be. Well, uh, and I know, big banks. you know, you have invested in a lot of community banks as I well have. through the years. I have, you know, so I have. And, you know, frankly, we've done well. I yeah. mean, we have done every bank that we invested in made money, never, never even a question of failure. Um, and, and we've done extremely well uh, investing in banks, but more importantly, I depend on the, uh, the relationships that is more re important to me. And, you know, the legacy relationship, we were the largest, uh, shareholder for many years and I'm still friends with Dennis over there. Yeah. Uh, and he's a great guy, yeah. but you know, uh, we have gone into many, many businesses and we've bought, I've probably bought and sold 50 to 60 companies over my career. And it's been fun. I mean, credit counseling is one thing. Debt, debt relief is a big part of my world, but also real estate uh, has I've been able to be extremely lucky and, and buy well, um, because frankly, I don't care. I don't care whether I own that building across the street or not as long as it makes sense financially to me. And I know from a standpoint, if I buy a building that that cheap enough, I'll figure out what to do with it, but it's all about cost. When people are paying, you know, 500, $1,000 a foot to purchase an asset, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you got, that puts a lot of pressure on you. And then you need to borrow the money. Right. Um, so our real estate business is pretty good. Uh, and I've been able to come in and out of different businesses and different industries pretty efficiently. Tell us it, about a couple of those. Like what are some of the bigger outside of the credit business, which is your bread and sure, butter? Sure. What are some of the other things that you've gotten into that have been successful? Uh, and right. also what are some that have not been successful? Oh, there have been some that <laughs> Let's have hear about not both. been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, actually, I'd rather spend the time telling you what's not successful. Okay. Um, you know, we've gotten into businesses where we thought the partners were great and they wowed us. And, you know, you turn, you find out they're not so great. And mm. sometimes down in South Florida, you know, there's less uh, scruples than uh, necessary. And we learned that the hard way. Always do your due diligence on partners that you're you know, it's almost a marriage and you need to know these people and you need to know these backgrounds. And if they've been questionable in the past, there's a good reason for it. You know, typically uh, leopards don't change their colors. Um, so be careful who you do business with. I think that's great advice. And as a banker who's, you know, I've been down here since 1985, right? So I have seen my share of that same element, uh, certainly here in South Florida. And I always tell people, because we have had a lot of people who've just moved here from other, you know, particularly New York, California. And I always say when, if they're customers of the bank, I said, if you're dealing with somebody, run them by me. Because if I don't know them and Howard doesn't know them and our network of people that we know doesn't know them, probably not a good person to venture well, into the deal. Knowing with. it's now we got this thing called the internet and, <laughs> and you can do some well, pretty you can. good research on people, I mean, clearly a lot of people have moved here. You know, before people were moving here to start over or running away, and the bad guys tend to always go, they come to Florida, yeah. they get kicked out of Florida, they go to Texas, they get kicked out of Texas, they go to California, and then they start all over again. So, you know, Florida is a place where sometimes people with questionable morals come and you gotta be careful. Um, we have been in mortgage companies before with people. Uh, it's crazy, you know, right before the great recession, which started in November of uh, 2007. Yeah, probably. I bought a, I invested into a mortgage company in August of 2007. <laughs> uh, Probably not one of my better timing. Okay. Um, but we bought a bunch of businesses over times. Um, you know, and and 
have sold a bunch of businesses. Uh, Gary Press and I have yeah. uh, sold a couple businesses and sold units. Uh, we had a benefits company and we sold that uh, for a tremendous amount of money. Um, I've been up in the Wellington area uh, over the last 15 years, part of the equestrian world. Um, so we sold the uh, equestrian uh the, the equestrian center up there and the polo club through partners. My partner was the main, main guy on there. And, you know, he's a very talented guy. Um, you know, now we are actually uh, in the aeronautics business uh, where we're taking apart planes, refurbishing the parts, fixing the parts, and also fixing parts for, uh, for airlines. And that company is ripe for a sale. Um, so there's a bunch of businesses that we've been in and out of. You know, I, I used to do acquisitions for in the credit counseling space, but there's nobody left to buy. I bought everybody. And we probably <laughs> bought 30 companies' wow. portfolios over the time, over the course of time. So uh, you know, the one thing Keith I've been able to do over over time is you know, I have a very good street sense, and maybe it's growing up in Jersey and smelling stuff before you you get beat up or whatever but i i could read people really well if i have one superpower that's it my gut is excellent it's still good I'm not the smartest guy but i am very good with street sense and i've been able to partner with unbelievable people and i wouldn't be where i am today without uh the friendship and 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 Honestly, the the dedication of a lot of the people that have been with me for many many years. Uh, we all started as kids, and now we're still kids, but we're a little older now. Yeah. Um, and and now it's time to figure out uh, the next move. You know, where to try to get that next line of people to succeed us? Because I don't want to work. Till I'm 90 years old, although I think I probably will because I'm I get really bored really fast. Um, I think you will. Too. And and my wife has a horse fetish, so I think <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Um, but frankly, uh, you need those people to take the take to step up, and and we're starting to develop that within our organization. We have 700 people that work for us wow. throughout all our companies. Yeah. And, and it's been a great ride. I mean, I'm chairman of a small public company. We just released earnings. Which company is that? Uh, Flex Shopper up in Boca. It's a oh, wow. subprime sub, uh, finance company. And that's been a, a great experience. And that's doing uh, subprime for homes? No, 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 no. Autos? No. Uh, small loans. Oh, just, so, okay. so they do an- Unsecured? Uh, unsecured. They do a lease to own program. Uh, essentially a rent -a center or Aaron rents online. So oh, no okay. brick and mortar stores. They just, you, a TV, you need a TV, they'll ship it right out to you. Okay. So TV. kind of almost like being out, buy now, pay buy, later. Type. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Great company, great staff, but you know, it's had its challenges. Yeah. Um, we recently lost our CEO. He passed away wow. within the last uh, month and a half. And, I will tell you, it's been challenging. He, sure. But he was super smart, super talented, and he set the company up for success. So well, that's good. we are we just uh, released earnings, which were positive. Thank Excellent. God. And and uh, but it's been challenging. You know, that is a new chapter. I've never done a public company. I've taken a bunch of companies public over the years, um, but you know running the day-to-day -day or being involved more uh as a chairman it's a it's a, it's it's good it's cool and it's you've been involved also in the community a lot absolutely and philanthropy and talk a little bit about that and you know what is your what motivates you to give back and what has set your tone for that well you know and i think life experiences create a path future for everybody. You know, when my father died, he died in my arms when I was a kid, um, really tragically, uh, and it changed me. It 
I, all of a sudden, I was 13 years old, and I was the man of the house within minutes. And I, it definitely, I saw the struggles. I saw the struggle that my mother went to. I remember the heat getting turned off in our house in New Jersey in February because mom didn't have the money to pay the heating bill. Yeah. I mean, that is challenging. Um, and, it, and, and it changed me dramatically. And I know how people, because of the business I'm in, I know how people struggle. I mm -hmm. hear it. I see it. And, you know, if I can help as many people as I can, that's great. Um, and that's, and, and I look forward to that. You know, it's our duty for those of us who have done well over the course of time to provide and help others and give guidance to others. I spend a tremendous amount of time giving advice, whether people want it or not is another <laughs> question. But I do spend it to our youth. Um, you know, the biggest charitable push I've ever done was creating Parkland Cares. Uh, the night of the Stoneman Douglas massacre, and that's what it was, it was a massacre. Uh, I looked at my kids at the table and, and, and we were having uh, dinner and everybody was crying, tears. You know, we had sure. friends that were not seen from. Right. And we turned around and I said, we got to do something. And I walked in uh, to uh, our community outreach person's office the next day. I said, guess what we're doing for the next few years? And she goes, what? I go, we're going to start a charity. And so far we've paid for thousands, tens of thousands of hours of, of mental health counseling through Parkland Cares. Wow. And it's a great organization. It's run by great people. Um, and, and frankly, it's, it's, that has been very meaningful. I've had uh, mental illness in my family. I've seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly these kids need it, help and they still need help. And there's a lot of people hurting in this, in this world. Uh, Parkland Cares uh, has brought in its, um, its reach, not only to help the victims of the Parkland shooting, but in Broward County, throughout Broward County, and frankly, throughout South Florida, we are supporting uh, mental health uh, organizations and, and, and giving back to the community wow. doing that. Because there's, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the underdog and nobody wants to talk about mental health. It's a dirty word. You know, nobody wants to talk about it. We know it's there. We know people are struggling, but we just don't want to talk about it in this in our society. So if I'm the one who's supporting mental health in this in there, great. Also, food. It appalls me that people are on Broward Boulevard standing around the corner to get a meal. It's appalling. While we're sending company or countries that hate our guts, we're sending billions of dollars out of this country when we can't feed our own. So yeah. feeding the poor, mental health are really, really my, my goals, you know, to, from a charitable standpoint. But I've been on the United Way, Junior Achievement. We've given, you know, in totality, I mean, I don't know. Probably, let's just say we've given millions away over the course of the last 25 years wow, that's um, great. millions and millions to local charities and some out, out outside sure um yeah if you are successful i think it's our duty to give back to the community and we make it fun you know we do a lot of stuff throughout the companies um and we've quietly given away that much money um and it's a pretty substantial amount but we don't make it, but we make it fun within our organizations. You know, we'll have a bowl -a thon we'll, we'll raise money around the offices and do weird stuff. And, you know, it's just, we try to make it fun while doing good. Ah, and, that's great. And, but certainly Parkland Cares has been one of those things that if, if that is meaningful, it's helping a lot of people. There's no, no thing bigger than I've ever done than help 
those folks. Well, that's a great story. Thank you for, for sharing that. What is, uh, before we go to the lightning round, which is coming oh, up next. Oh, I'm, I've been warned <laughs> about your lightning round. Before that though, what's, what's one piece of it? You've shared a lot of different advice, but if you had one piece of advice for entrepreneurs who are listening to this podcast, what would be your, your main piece of advice to them? Don't be afraid to fail. And if you fail, you get back up and you keep swinging. And if you get knocked down, you keep getting up. Surround yourself with really smart people, whoever they are. Just surround yourself with the best and the brightest. And make sure when you hire somebody, everybody that works for you has to be smarter than you. <laughs> no, seriously, you got to hire smarter people. You don't know everything. Yeah. I'm not the smartest guy. I have good street sense and I have the ability to push forward. I don't give up. But the fact when you're starting a business from the ground up or even you're halfway through your career, just keep, not everything's gonna work out and you're gonna fall down, but you gotta get back up no matter what. And you have to keep pushing and pushing. Life isn't easy sometimes. And, and if, you, if you allow yourself to be defeated, then shame on you. So that's great advice. And, and, you know, so your favorite song by Springsteen? Oh, it's got to be No Retreat, No Surrender. <laughs> Actually, it's called No Surrender. Right. And, and because I am a Jersey Shore boy, oh, of course. Uh, you know, right. I've been friends with the band and uh, the over Stone the Stone Pony and, and all that. Stone Pony, the whole <laughs> bit. I just got done with four concerts. Wow. Uh, and a couple months ago, when he came to Florida, I went to, to uh, Tampa for opening night. Orlando, South uh, Hard Rock down here. And then wifey went it, said, we got to go. And <laughs> we went to Greensboro and saw an unbelievable show. You know, awesome. the guy, 73 years old. And, and I was tired going to all these <laughs> concerts. This guy's singing right. his brains out right. for three hours straight. God wow. bless the man. Now it's that's incredible. energy. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go to the lightning round. So these are just quick answers. Okay. Um, favorite book? Favorite book is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Great. It has book. nothing to do with, with, uh, with, with, with making money, but it has everything to do with life. Wow, great one. We just heard your favorite song. Yeah. We got that one. No Surrender by Bruce Springsteen. What are you most grateful for? Obviously, I'm grateful for the family and the friends and the support, but I'm also grateful just to keep doing what I love to do. And, and if I can help a lot of people, which I have a weird career, Keith, because obviously I make a few dollars, but I also help thousands and thousands, millions of people change their lives for the better. So that I'm grateful for. Oh, that's awesome. Who would you, this is going to be a person living or dead, who would you like to have dinner with? My father. Oh, man. Yeah, let me tell you. Wow, that just hit me because I lost my dad when I was young also. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good one. Uh, favorite restaurant? Oh, that's tough. Look at the size <laughs> of me, man. <laughs> Anything Italian, although I like old school Italian stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great restaurants. It's funny because you go across, you know, you go around the country and I travel quite a bit. Yep. And, and. But local though. We want something we can go to like radio. Probably Tettorio Romano over in Boca. Oh, Pretty nice. good. Pretty good. Great. Pretty You've good. You've been to, since Anthony reopened? Yet? I have not. Is it good? Oh, we got to go there. We got to go. Our That's our where dinner. we're going. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's My great. treat this time though. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> um, how about favorite podcast, movie, you know, it's funny. I, I've been doing a lot of Audible uh, books. Okay. So yeah. I do a lot of biographies. I always love hearing about things. I just finished up something on Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah. Uh, interesting the guy. Lion in the White House. Um, very interesting guy. But any biography I love. Um, I do watch some of the podcasts out there. Uh, I love watching you, frankly. Well, I do. Yeah. I'm thank inspired you. by what you say. <laughs> well, thank you. 
favorite, uh, well, hobbies? What do you do when you're not working? You I work out quite a bit because yep. I work to eat. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I play tennis. I've been playing tennis for 16, 17 years. Um, I, I do that. I have the Peloton. I have all that stuff and I go to the gym quite a bit. Awesome. Yeah. I like walking though. Like just, it's my thing. I'll go and walk for hours and not be seen from awesome. and throw the headset on. Cool. Happiest time in business and lowest time in business. Oh, that's a good one. Um, the happiest time is was certainly starting the business. Didn't know if I was going to be able to keep the li the lights on, uh, and and I remember wow. calling my mom, uh, saying, "I'm not sure if this business. This is the first year. If this business is going to work, it's." She goes, "Howie, it's Easter. You know, people are not focused on this. They're focused <laughs> on spending money." And she was absolutely right. I I was raised by an incredibly intelligent. Uh, woman and and she was great. Lowest time, um, there was times when you know we got involved in certain businesses that probably you know I should have done a little better investigation of um, and what they were doing and and that was challenging. Yeah, sure. yeah. So well, thank you, you get dragged in. Unfortunately, you get dragged in from actions of others. Right. So. Great, great job today. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing all that information. How can people get in touch with you? Well, certainly, listen, my email address is Howard Dvorkin at howarddvorkin.com. Pretty easy because <laughs> we have so many companies. Right. I couldn't remember them all. Um, and, and frankly, if they want to call me or email me, I'm happy to help them. I'm happy to talk to them if they have ideas. I'm happy to listen. You're on LinkedIn? I'm um, on LinkedIn yeah. and, and, you know, and I got to say, you, I want to interview you. That's <laughs> what I want to do because you're really good and you're interesting. Your story is terrific. And, and frankly, if this uh, banking thing doesn't work out for you, maybe you should think about doing this full time. <laughs> now, well, you know, looking at Joe Rogan, you know, I mean. <laughs> All right. No. Well, we'll uh, thank you, Howard. It's Appreciate great. It. Great thank seeing you. you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for your time. Great. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Locality's Making Bank podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to catch the latest episodes and visit localitybank.com today to learn more about all the benefits of banking local. Mm -hmm.